All right, Shalom Rastafari. This will be the part two of the book club, uh, Rastafari book club, and I and I L O J publishers, Line of Jew Society publishers, and we want to bring this to your attention right here: the Fikare, the Fikare Iesus, or the explication, the explication of Iesus. In a sense, you can translate that as the interpretation of Iesus and this was this is based on the manuscript presented the witness of his majesty this particular document right here so this is um this is the cover right here and you know we were looking for who the artist is that put this together you know and we like to give them credit for this particular artwork right here but in the you know in the grace of his majesty and Christ because the contents of this is very important for us to understand because this is his imperial majesty's witness, you know, sent to these last days and time. And it's interesting because the publication um, date of this was from the 43rd year, as it says, the 43rd year. It says, Begurmawi Ngusa Nagesh Kadamawi Haila Salase Be Arba. So, 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 In other words, it's from the 43rd, right, the 43rd um, year of His Majesty's reign. So when we look at the 43rd year, we say that the 43rd year, what would that be, 72, um, 73, between 72 and 73, and there's some very interesting um, prophecies you know, and leading towards these end times that were occurring both in Ethiopia and also outside. Some of you might know about the imposter pope, right? And some of you might have seen the footage of His Majesty um, meeting with um, the, the pope, I think, in um, Quirinale, in Quirinale Palace that was used to be King uh, Victor Emmanuel's palace. And then we're going back to the time of um, Mussolini and then what's connected with that is the whole obelisk, the, the matter concerning the obelisk. And we briefly um, touched on that time. I think New York Times or Time Magazine had some articles about it and one of the brethren was able to get some of the fuller information and share it with I and I. And I, and I give thanks to the Wendemoch for their co-laboring and fellowship with I and I in the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty, or Moan Bessa Zem Negeda Machiber um, Mazenin, um, as an acronym in the Ethiopic. But this book actually, it's I and I, it's I and I, our mother in law, who actually brought back this particular book right here. So I wanted to even talk about um, Abu Kadus and try to speak on that, where he's at, or if it's fake or whatnot. They need to really have some real knowledge and witness and evidence more than just their speculation, you know what I'm saying? But this testimony here, so what we did is typeset this, again, pre present this, and, you know, give due accreditation, you know, accreditation to the King of Kings. Because in our um, um, roar, we call it like a roar translation, you know, a roar translation. Now, what is a roar translation? A roar translation is basically taking it ba basic word by word and putting it together, you know, saying word by word. What is the interpretation? Well, every translation has a certain amount of interpretation, but interpretation is different than an interpolation. When we say that certain ones are interpolating, they are putting into it, they're adding to it, they're putting their own philosophy, their own spin on it. Some might say, well, Ras, Iadinos, Iadonis, you're doing the same thing. Well, the only way you can prove that is to is to know what these source materials are. You know, saying first of all, that's not what we are doing. We're not reading into it when we translate. And this is why it takes time and patience to really present this, because you have to have the spiritual gift, you know, saying of of tongues and interpretation. I think it's um, uh, Corinthians. Actually, in Corinthians, we've been mentioning this. Let's just get this right here. It, it speaks all about this, exactly what we're talking about. That's why, in order to um, encourage I and I, you know, I and I brothers and sisters, you know, saying, we also have to recognize. Yeah, it was chapter, chapter, um, 
chapter, uh, the spiritual gifts of the of the ministry. Um, chapter 12 speaks on it. But then we get to chapter 14, actually. It says that prophecy, prophecy is the greatest gift. You can know the prophecy. Some feel and some assume that because it is true that Adamawi Haile Shalasi was crowned November 2nd, 1930, that that is a fulfillment, a major fulfillment of biblical prophecy. But some assume from that, well, it's all said and done. Not so, you know, not so fast. Um, prodigal sons are disobedient. Some are disobedient because they know better. But it seems easier for them to just say, well, it's all said and done, so forth and so on. But what about today? What about what's going on in this day and time? You see, the prophecy is very important. So we have to recognize what has been fulfilled and also where we are in that fulfillment of scriptural and biblical prophecy. So for the gifts of tongues, you understand, and the proper order of the ministry, the ministry of his imperial majesty, chapter 14 speaks about the order of the ministry of of the gifts of the Sega or the Sitota, the divine gifts. I cannot say that it's because of just my hard work that 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 I know or I'm able to speak on the things I speak on. Because even when I'm speaking on things, I want to sit down and, and, and write down what I'm saying too. You understand? And those who those who who work the work of God and admit and he gives you those spiritual, those true spiritual gifts. You understand? Recognize that, yes, we have to labor, but we're laboring to enter into his Shabbat, entering into his rest. Not just a one-day thing, you understand? But that one day is important as a discipline, as an order of keeping that Al-Kidan, that covenant. So the Torah studies and the Shabbat and the sabbatical, the Sendet, is very important. So for the gifts, it speaks on tongues. You know what I'm saying? It's this particular chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you know what I'm saying? I want to connect that with the Amharic language. It's very important because we're talking about the language of God. Now we're speaking about the revelation of I and I, God, Father, the King of Kings. And this is what we are bringing forward to you at this present moment, the Ficare Iesus, the Ficare Iesus, the explication of Iesus, right? Some say the interpretation, some say the exposition in the exposition, because it does have to do with interpretation. You understand? Very much so. But we need to be grounded, right? Ficare Iesus. Now, this was published in the 43rd um, year of the reign of Nagusa Nagas. And as you were saying in the first part, part one, that, that, is, that was about 1973, 72, 73. You understand? 72, 73. Um, depends on how you how you count or count the years, seeing that there's that seven or eight year difference between the Western and the Ethiopic um, um, calendar or calculation accounting of, of of time. So the book is called the Kari Yesus, and the subtitle is Where Tinbite Nebia and the Prophecy of the Prophets. But we have to recognize when we speak about interpretation. You see, interpretation. We, we, we're not going so much in interpreting this and saying, well, this absolutely means that. But what we're saying is that even there's a 9-11, there's a thing here in this about 9-11. This is why this particular cover is so very interesting. With the Fikari Yesus, as you see, the 11, you see the buildings right there, right? You see the building right there, right? And you see the Son of Man, right? Lich Tefari. And this is 2012, and this is the first time that this book has been published. The Overstand has been published in the West, and you can get it off of Amazon. If you want it, you can go to INI, INI page as well. It's in, you know, it's in circulation because it needs to be, we need to remember this. Now, this is the testimony of His Majesty concerning these latter days, and it's INI mother-in-law who brought this particular book forward, and in retype setting it, it's basically the same number, it's 72 pages. This is 72 pages, and this is 72 pages. We didn't sit down and say, we're going to make it 72 pages, but that's how it, that's how it has come forward. So it's, it's a witness, you understand, I and I father, 
the oath and the I and I, the sons and the daughters. Um, and we mentioned we want to give due accreditation to the artists of this. But let me just share a little bit more of this right here. And this is um, Ficare Jesus, Ficare Jesus in Amharic only. This is a version in Amharic only, but it has a very um, beautiful typeset. So we can see the letters very clearly, and it, it is in bold type. You understand? Let's just give you a little sample of this right here. You can see some of the pages right here in, you know, in pretty bold, clear type. All right, and we've done our best to weed it from errors, but if there are any particular errors, you know, we ask one and all to bring that to I and I attention so we can, you know, upgrade it and correct those particular errors. And you can see this apocalypse picture. See His Majesty, we touched on that before in another vid, His Majesty in that particular apocalypse picture. All right, is that supernatural right there? What, what, what's up with that? How one say that His Majesty is supernatural is a false concept. He doesn't teach no such thing. You know, and there are false concepts. There are evil spiritual forces. And, it, and these two books right here, as we mentioned before, the, the Ethiopic book of Enoch, the Metzhafe Henoch, right, the Metzhafe Henoch, and this translation is a good translation because one of the first translations, and it's when, you know, is when they were seeking to speak to themselves and figure out what does it really mean. You know, that's like the first time they go over a book or ones go over a book. And it's what we're going to try to present with the Fikari Yeses. What does it mean? Just, just the raw, you understand, the raw, the raw, um, you know, translation word for word, you understand, and very limited interpretation of it, where you have to then put the words in a more understandable way. We'll go through some of that hopefully in the Nabob date, right? So this particular book here and this particular book right here, they go together. You understand? I mean, in spirit. You understand? Seeing where we're at in what particular time. And the fact that these were all known from an Ethiopic perspective or from our Ritua Hymenos, from the correct faith, from the Tawahedo faith. You understand? From our own faith base. The faith that His Imperial Majesty, Kedamawi Haile Shalase, he is a defender of this faith. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking about church, we're not talking about even denomination, but the correct faith, the right faith. So this book right here, right, the explication of Jesus Christ, the prophesied little book of HIM, of his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, published in the 43rd year of his imperial reign on the throne of David in Ethiopia. The African Zion, prior to the Illuminati's godless, quote, godless and creeping, godless and cruel dragon, end quote, so-called creeping coup against Christ in his kingly, you see that right there, some of the last photos of our father, the ancient of days, against Christ in his kingly character and the end of the world or the world lit, if you please. God's word said that there would be last days like these. This is why this picture is so, you know, prophetic and, and relevant in these times that we are living. And it gives a witness. You understand? He has not left us. He would do no thing except he showed to his, his prophets or his servants, the prophets, right? So this is the prophecy as explicated by the Son. And as affirmed by I and I Father, I and I Abba, right? So God's word said there will be days like these. One only needs to read the revelation of St. John. Now we quote, right, we quote on the back of the book right here um, from Revelation um, chapter 10, and we quote from verse 2. Now this is, this is the book that we received. Right? This is the little book right here from Ethiopia, right? This is the little book that we received, and we showed you this um, previously before, right? So now Revelation chapter 10, verse 2, it says, quote, And he had in his hand a little book, and it said he had a little book open, right? A little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot 
on the earth. Then in Revelation chapter 10, verse 8, a couple of verses forward, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake to me again and said, Go and take, right, and take the little book which is open in the hand of the what? The Melaach, the hand of the messenger, the hand of the angel, right? Take the book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Verse 10, verse 9, it says, And I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. 10.10 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, right? And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, in the mar, right? It's, it's sweet as honey, right? It was in my mouth sweet as honey, sweet as honey to say. And as soon as I had eaten it, as soon as I had mawahed it, to it, and it was digested it, really got it, right? In other words... As soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Now, i got to testify right here that even right now I'm going, it's not as it was before, but still it is. Because as you're translating it, you understand, or as I and I was translating or interpreting it, you understand, I'm beginning to see things that have happened. I'm beginning to see things that are happening, you understand. And therefore, if the things that already have happened, are true, and the things that are happening are happening, then it's also showing these things to come, you understand, which is based on the prophets and it's based on Yeshua's word. So these, the basic um, reference points are the Bible. This is what we have to understand. The basic reference points are the Bible of this little book, the Ficare Iesus, right? So it goes on to verse uh, 10, 11, and he said to me, thou must prophesy again. He didn't say, well, if you like to, you can go and prophesy. No, thou must prophesy again before whom? Before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. You know what I'm So this book also must be translated, interpreted into the different nations and among the, what it says, who had to prophesy before many peoples? Many different type of peoples. You understand? Know whether they're tribes of Beta Israel or of Gentiles, then nations. Whether they're Beta Israel nations, you understand? Know or black Hebrew Israelite nations or other nations and tongues, right? And different languages. And kings and, the, and these rulers, these temporal rulers. You understand? Know and this is the witness. So, how, how so called ironic, or this is a coincidence too, both the Book of the Seven Seals and this little book. Yovzin and this little book, Yovas, and many can attest that yes, this is the book His Majesty published in the 43rd year. In fact, it even says so right here on the book. You understand? And it's in this book too, as well, the Amharic only version. The last um, paragraph right here, this is probably the most of the English in this, besides a couple of other English markers and some footnotes that we put um, in the beginning, you understand, of the, the book, right? Um, the title page or the princess page or whatever they call it. It says, therefore, this little book, right, this little book is being presented and printed in 2012 A.D. by the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty to prepare, remind, and exhort. That means to um, give counsel, the, the wise counsel, advice to the faithful Ethiopians and elect Rastafari in these last days and times. And we know it's the last days and times of this Gentile world dominion. You understand? But it's also a time of when the earth and the heavens go through a renewal. So we have to be in the right, in, in the right um, spirit, a soul, and body, the triune. We have to be in the, we have to be born again. You understand? And we have to be up to ascension rate. You understand? That means that we have to, once we're born again and we're children, you see, Abba takes care of his children. As long as his children are agreeable and obedient, they shema. You understand? And they shema. Now, let's just go on right here. So it says that 
forthwith the publisher in a Rasi Yadinos Tesari, I lend him Brother um, Yadin, and the society, speaking of the brotherhood and those co-partners and co-laborers with the society, will publish a companion text containing a raw translation and detailed um, annotated interpretation of his majesty's last version. This is the last version of this. This version was actually, some say, older. This was, uh, some say it comes from, some say, Falash or the Beit Israel, or then came from the Falash Mora when the, some of the Beit Israel received Yeshua. So they became, they were Falash, or they come from the Beit Israel root, like Kedamawi, Haila, Shalase, but have received Christ, so we call them Ethiopian Christian, but their real root is in that black Judaic root and truth, right? So um, this is His Majesty's now last version that was, um, that was published prior to what we call the great transgression or the rebellion against the King of Kings. Um, as per Psalm um, 19, I think. Yes, yeah, Psalm 19, if you read it in the Tehillim, the, 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 the Tehillim, the tehillim, the tehillim, which is the, the, Jewish, um, the Jewish version, which the footnotes, they say that the great transgression is rebellion against the King of Kings. And we find that to be very, very interesting. So prior to the great transgression against H.I.M., His Imperial Majesty, and against God's elect, God's elect, the Shiyume Egezi Aviher, His Imperial Majesty's official title, by the careless Ethiopians at home in Ethiopia and abroad. And those of us also over here are part of that careless group or careless contingent. Our, our, where were our parents, our foreparents? Even we as Afro-American, you know, an Afro-American Beta Israel, Afro-American Ethiopian Hebrews, and we, many of us as Afro-American Rastafari, we really have to see that when we look at the Ethiopians, you understand, know at, at home, what they went through, we have to ask ourselves, well, where was I and I parents? They were marching down to Washington, you understand, know, down to, to Egypt, you understand, know to ask Pharaoh to do something for them and still saying, let my people go. You understand, know instead of coming out, you understand, we went deeper, we went down to Egypt, and there's a prophecy on that as well. What do you think D.C. is? They're telling you now, it's shaped like this, they did the obelisk like that, and that, and ain't changed you like that, they did this like that. Come on, don't you get it? Okay, Benjamin Banneker for the black guy, white guy, whatever. It's spiritual Egypt, that's the point. You understand, know that's the point right there. So, um, at home and abroad, and in closing on this, as his imperial majesty said to that generation, as he said to that generation, what did he say to that generation? He said, he said, pray, right? He said, pray to God. You see this picture right there? He said, pray to God. He will forgive you. Because they asked, well, what are they to do now? Like many are beginning, their eyes are beginning to open, and they're seeing more of the fullness of this. You understand? More of the vision. You understand that vision are becoming clear. They're seeing what days and times we're in, right? So what are they to do? What are we to do? Pray to God. Pray to John in the name of Yeshua, right? He will forgive you. Amen and amen. So brothers and sisters, get a copy of the Fikari Yesus, the Amharic, the Amharic only um, version, um, and, and stay tuned. Um, and pray for I and I to be able to, you know, keep the shalom, keep the peace and the grace, and be able to also um, bring the translation, the raw text translation, the explication of the Yesus, otherwise known as Sakare Yesus, forward. This this little book, you understand? Revelation five five. We have the what? We have the Metaf Kedus, right? Right, the book of the seven seals, Revelation five five, right? And then from his Imperial Majesty. And I and I really didn't know about this. I and I have to thank I and I we've already but we continually thank I and I mother in law for bringing this to I and I attention. You understand? Know and then when we saw it and read it for I and I self that his majesty published this prior, you understand, know in that particular time. So he well was aware and he knew and he was trying to leave us that prophetic information, 
you know, saying we who are that kith and kin, and may we be reminded that, you know, without Yeshua HaMoshiach, we cannot do anything. But, of course, in Him, all things, we are overcomers. So get a copy of this today, brothers and sisters, and, and you know, join the Rastafari, the Line of Jew Society book club. All right? Shalom Rastafari.